Hi friends. Hi Kate. Hi. Uh, welcome to the fourth edition of Lift India Film Awards and Awards World Cinema Fest. Um, and we are talking about this film, uh, Penny, uh, which has been uh, selected and also nominated for the Lift India Awards. And uh, we are glad that you could spare uh, your time uh, to talk to us about the film. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. Thanks so much for inviting me. Okay. Uh, since uh, Sahitya is with us and he's been on the selection panel, uh, I would uh, give the honor to Sahitya to ask you the question first. Okay. Uh, because he is uh, among one of the selection panelists who is responsible for selecting the film. Thank you so much. Hi, Kate. Uh, first of Hi. all, congratulations on your film. Uh, it's a very relevant film in today's time. And apart from that, uh, it's so balanced. And uh, it's a short film. And even then, your char character in particular has a very huge emotional graph from yeah. the beginning of the film till the end. So I would uh, want to understand how did you approach your character? Was it a very organic approach? Or uh, did you have a lot of uh, preparation uh, in the character for preparing for the character? Well, I mean, it, it's a long time ago now since we made the film. Yes. Um, but Robin, I, sp I spent a lot of time talking to Rob. So we had a lot of conversations because um, I interrogated a lot of the scenes because she has a sort of this storyline with her husband that's happening that we don't get to see a lot of what the history of that is. So I had to try and convey the um, state of mind that she was in at that time and in the moment because she crashes her car and uh, abandons her car and kind of meanders out into the streets sort of in distress. but more less because of the event of the car crash and more because of what's going on with her marriage mm -hmm. and having this kind of new information about this affair that she's discovered. And that's kind of, that had to be um, at a heightened level because there was very little in terms of the um, time that we had in the storytelling to really open all of that up. Um, but that kind of sets the tone of like where she's at mentally when her encounter happens with Penny. So that was a lot of discussion. Like what, what is, what's Rob's perception of this marriage and, and what is going on with this woman and why is she behaving in, in this way and how is she reacting to the circumstances and then what decisions is she making from that headspace does that answer your question <laughs> yeah and uh, then when you guys were on the location so when you were performing uh, did you guys take too many takes to perform or uh, was it shot uh, very quickly How it was it that really fast we were moving very quickly and it was very it was the most guerrilla style um shooting that I've ever participated in, where we were capturing locations very quickly, um, not always permitted, and uh, moving from one place to the next, just trying to grab as much content as we could. Because I think, I, if I remember correctly, I think we, shoot it in, we shot it in two days. Um, and most of what I did was in the evenings and, and into the night. So it was like night shoots and um, very on the fly. So there was there wasn't a lot of there was no rehearsal and there was not a lot of time to find anything. It had to be like very commit to a moment and then whatever Rob liked from that, be able to get at it again and recreate it. We didn't do a ton of coverage. It was a lot of like handheld and in the moment grabbing as much as possible <clears throat> right and a lot of a uh, lot in fact the entire film is uh, shot on the streets yeah. and uh, a lot of your scenes are conversational scenes while walking yeah and uh, so uh, were you guys conscious of uh, where the camera has been placed while filming or the camera was far away from you guys and you were taking it away very organically 
Yeah, I mean, he we did sound takes where it was very much like right in our face and trying to navigate the pace of what you're how you're walking and going around the corner and those kinds of moments were more technical. Um, but a lot of a lot of it was us like naturally doing what we were doing and him trying to come around and catch that from whatever direction uh in whatever take and then sometimes he was just like really all around us as we were moving more um yeah it was much more on the fly and grabbing 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 as opposed to really structured blocked out uh, conceived moments because we didn't have like fancy gear <laughs> and we didn't have a lot of time <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was, it was, yeah, it was a lot of like try and really be in the experience of what's happening between the other actor and myself, and then allow them to just go and do whatever they can in the in the space. I don't know if I'm being articulate, but yes, I mean that that answers uh, what I think Sahitya was asking. And uh, I'll just uh, insert a point over here since I had to say that since most of the shoot and uh, were, uh, it's shot on streets and you were walking and talking, etc. So uh, like I had a, a conversation with Rob earlier and in which he's, he told us that uh, the person who was playing the character Penny Troy, the actor, yeah. he's basically a model and, and he's not an actor as per se, uh, a professional actor, but he's more of a model. Uh, so two things here which have a, a question is that how is it for you as an actor to perform and interact uh, with an actor who is just starting out, uh, who is known to be a model and maybe probably it's his one of the first uh, uh, films as an actor. So, uh, and you are quite a seasoned actor. Uh, so how is that relationship built uh, between you and a newcomer actor? and? Secondly, uh, did you uh, have a lot of rehearsals, uh, a workshop uh, sort of a thing with the uh, director and the actors earlier since you had to settle for a gorilla shoot? Um, well, I think with Troy specifically, he he's very relaxed and very natural and very comfortable. Um, so like some less experienced actors might have more of a challenge feeling that level of comfort in front of the camera, but he never had, he obviously from his modeling experience, that was not a um, challenge for him. It wasn't, yes. uh, yeah, there was no like, sense of his nerves or, uh, or his awareness of the camera. The camera could live anywhere and he was completely natural. So a lot of our, Performance, I think, was um, ba like it was helped by a natural kind of chemistry that the two of us just found between each other. And the more comfortable we were playing just with one another as two human beings, um, I think that was the... Um, uh, you know, the, I would say like kudos to Rob for being able to capture that and and just have these two people kind of relating to each other. We didn't discuss on any kind of uh, theoretical level. Him and I never talked about like my approach to a script or how I worked on the script. That was all just like homework I did on my own. And I don't know this, the way in which he approached the script and what... Um, but I think we just kind of clicked and then we were able to, to find a nice um, relationship, the two of us. Uh, and, ho and hopefully other people feel that way too, because I feel like it reads on camera that we have like a nice connection. Um, but I, I guess I've worked in different contexts with, actors who are way more experienced than I am and with actors who have much less experience. I came from a theatrical background of classically trained actor. So I have um, probably more extensive approach to script analysis than maybe other actors do. And the more I work in film and TV, the less I um, 
hold myself hostage to those earlier training guidelines because I feel like in the in stage there's a different skill set and there is a um a different kind of relationship to to how you approach a script and with film and tv there well tv is even diff more different but film there's such a natural kind of um the more ease you have in front of the camera and the more you allow the camera to see what you're thinking and feeling the less important it is what choices you made in in that um initial analysis so i think working with people who maybe don't have as much experience what's most important to me is like finding a level of connection and and comfort so that we can play from that that natural place that's occurring between these two real people and then hopefully whatever the characters are going through is homework that we've done <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Because that's very important uh, for uh, the two actors to strike a chemistry, to strike a rapport and understand each other so that uh, when you're performing, uh, you know, both the actors are at ease and comfort zone with each other. Yeah, uh, and, and show, I think it was really important because they had to find, like she had to really find a new, uh, to, for her to be afraid of him just based on what he looks like. Yeah. And then to find an actual human connection with him and then to be the cause of this horrific end. It's so many, um, it's just so many emotional experiences that she has to go through. And I think the only way that it can add up to anything is if the humanity between the two of them is really seen. Yeah. I think that was really all that, like the most important thing to me. Yes. Um, when I spoke to Rob and about the script and uh, I had posed a question to him that uh, how much of the script got changed as uh, you were shooting when you went for the filming? Uh, you know what happens is when you have a script and the director is has a, a particular thing in his mind and when the actors step in, uh, and especially in a seasoned actors like you step in, uh, I'm sure uh, there is a lot which comes with the actors and uh, who would contribute to the script uh, at the time of the filming. So uh, was there anything which you felt, because see, you were a playwright also that we know. Uh, <laughs> uh, so uh, uh, it I'm often sure happens that when I mean, you have, uh, of course, I mean, if, if, I mean, you're a director yourself uh, and uh, so uh, it often happens. I mean, when actors of this caliber come uh, with uh, to a script, I mean, what is it that they bring to the script? So I, I would like, I'm very curious to know uh, your side of the story to that. Yeah, I think it's an interesting question because I, I struggle with this as a writer. Like I just finished launching a series that I wrote in, like co-wrote and co-created and I starred in, but there were a lot of other actors and a lot of the actors were improvisers and we specifically worked with them because of their improv skills. But there there was always this like tr difficult negotiation over like what lines absolutely have we deliberately spent time agonizing over and what lines is there some opportunity to play and give the actors the freedom to find something that's maybe better than what was written. And so I find that always a tricky place uh, to enter into any script because um, it, all, it all depends. Some writers and some directors and, and some circumstances, you absolutely cannot say any other words than what is written on the page and other circumstances there's some encouragement to to make it your own so Rob's script there were some components of it that I really interrogated I was really um I really wanted this woman to have some agency and I wanted to make sure that she lived inside of a marriage that was recognizable to me and I didn't want it to be stereotypical so we had a lot of discussion about that and it was very um 
challenging, I think, for him to be able to articulate that in an efficient way in such a short time. Um, so I, I don't really remember specifics, but I feel like there was a phone call and I don't, uh, the phone call we shot a couple of different ways and a couple of different times. And sometimes I was very true to the script. And then sometimes he was encouraging me to paraphrase and kind of improvise on my own. And I don't remember exactly what ended up being in the final piece. Um, but I think with the, the walking and talking scene between Troy and I was very true to what the script was. I, there was not a lot of veering in any um, improvisational direction. Uh, but yeah, I think I think it really depends on the project, where how you approach that and you're encouraged in either direction, depending on what the director really wants and how comfortable or committed they feel to that script. I mean, it's it's one thing when it's somebody like Rob, who's the writer and the director, it's another thing when you have a separate writer and a separate director. And then, you know, I'm always, I'm always a little bit truer to the writer than to the director. <laughs> 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 association with the power of the words, I feel like I really made a deliberate choice. So why am I deciding that I can change it in the moment? Um, so yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, it's for actors. It's it's very important to be true to the writer more. <laughs> I think I think so. Like you want to try and answer whatever they're. You want to articulate. I think our job is to try and make what the writer said as real and human as possible. And so maybe sometimes you're tripping out. You know, we've all like done some bad I, I, and, uh, since you mentioned that the phone call thing i mean i really uh, uh loved that sequence at the phone call when uh you make a call and uh for the cab uh, and you just you know uh glide sideways towards the wall in distress and you don't know what what to do where your life is heading uh that it, a very silent moment is you with yourself right yeah and uh, there were uh, one could feel there are multiple uh, emotions that are running across your head, um, you know. Um, and Rob is not used too much of music at that point. I mean, generally uh, in such situations, a lot of music is used to highlight and right. underline the emotions. Uh, but you uh, manage to get those emotions uh, very. Uh, uh, you know, on the face, uh, which didn't require so much of music, in fact. Right. Uh, it didn't and that, that was very effortless. I mean, the change of uh, your mindset from the previous thing uh, uh, where you have with Troy and, you know, uh, leaving him back and coming to the phone and being with yourself and then being totally startled with, with the, the sirens, which just go on. And, and, and those, uh, this whole gamut of emotions, which just we could see on your face. And so was that rehearsed or you just improvised it on the set? Yeah, that's very complimentary. I appreciate you saying that. Thank you. <laughs> um, no, it wasn't rehearsed. Uh, it was very much like we. I, I didn't know where the location was until we were at the phone and then the the whole scene he was describing, okay, I want you to do this. And then I just did it. Um, but I do feel like the, the circumstances were so intense that she is in a moment where she's trying to like process everything. And, and then when you hear the sirens and realize like, uh, what, how this mistake, like this misunderstanding and fear has been erased for her, like her experience is like, oh, that's over. I, how silly. I was so scared. I was so scared and like for no reason. And this guy's just a normal person and he's so kind. And now he's doing this favor for me. And like, she has all these ideas, like all these thoughts yes. in her mind. Yes. And then all of a sudden it's like uh, horrified that maybe her fear has created this misunderstanding which I still think 
from her like white privileged perspective, she has no concept of what the consequences of that mistake could be. I think maybe today now we're, we're more aware, but certainly at the time that we were shooting that, I really think that uh, ignorance is, is really integral to the piece that she really doesn't, she thinks it'll be fine and she'll be like, even when she knows that it's a horrific thing and she starts to run after the siren, I still don't think she ever considers that the outcome will be what the outcome ends up being. So there were, yeah, so I guess there were just a gambit of thoughts literally flowing yeah, through absolutely. her life. And, 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 and they were flowing effortlessly. I mean, it's, uh, and it's been beautifully edited also to retain those uh, change of expressions on your face. Uh, you know, I must compliment Rob for that. I mean, yeah. that he, uh, he didn't uh, cut away from that or he didn't break that flow. Or rush uh, it. Anyway, yes, yeah. or rush, yes. I mean, it's it's the edit basically, uh, which makes a lot of difference. As we say that most of the performances are made or spoiled by the edit. Yeah, <laughs> 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 All right. So, um, how much of the uh, the BLM uh, factor was uh, uh, playing uh, when you made this film? Was it that intense at that point when you were filming this film, or it got intense later? Say that again. Which part of the 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 BLM, the Black Lives Matters? Oh, the Black Lives Matters. Well, yes. I mean, it's. I think it's erupted this summer. So um, certainly, it was at. It was very much like what Rob was trying to articulate, I think. And it, and he was very passionate about like what he had seen and what he had witnessed and what he had experienced in his life and where he grew up. Um, and he, I think, felt like there, there just wasn't an acknowledgement that this was a reality. Um, and I have worked and lived in Regent Park in a neighborhood in downtown Toronto where uh, historically, it's been known for violence and violence within Black communities and against Black communities. And so, um, sir, true to me, uh, particularly this idea that this woman could be afraid and, and misunderstand a, a kind gesture and then not not consider that calling the police would result in something way out of her control. I think that is, uh, I think that's something that uh, a woman from my experience takes for granted and, and only recently really comprehends that there's a life we live that is completely different. And our experience of police and police interaction is like getting tickets because you didn't stop at a stop sign. It's not a life threatening experience. Um, so I, I think when the movie was being made, it was certainly true. I don't know that the awareness of the population was at the level that it is now where the, the way the news and media has been, uh, or, or even just like the fact that people have iPhones and can actually uh, film things that we cannot deny. I mean, I thought that scene at the end was very challenging to film, but was so true and bizarre. Like this idea that there's all these people standing around and witnessing this and, and they're all capturing it on their phones and the police, their reaction is is getting larger and larger and amplified by the presence of all these witnesses and yet they still shoot him so i don't know if i've answered your question but <laughs> no you have and you've added a lot of other points to it and it's it's, it's a point of concern uh how we improve upon 
the situation in this world around the corner because we are facing these kind of problems all around. Uh, yeah, and it, it was uh, horrifying to me in the moment to think that like, even though they are being witnessed, the police still continue to behave that way. But they're like this year, especially, but even beyond this year, there's so many examples of that not yeah. being, people being present is not a hindrance to continuing to, to participate in that kind of violence. Absolutely. I'll, I'll try to uh, digress uh, uh, from this uh, film a little bit and come on to your, uh, as an actor, uh, which uh, happened from theater. You started out with theater uh, yeah. and then coming into television and film. Uh, so how is this migration, uh, why this migration from theater to films? Um, well, I think initially it was very much like a practical financial transition. <laughs> it was... <laughs> I was thinking and directing a lot of theater and feeling like this maybe is not sustainable. Um, and I hadn't, I hadn't really um, made any formal commitment to pursuing film and television because it was a whole other medium that I didn't have a lot of experience with. I had studied Shakespeare and classical um, theater and, and thought that that was just all I ever wanted to do. And it wasn't until I, until I started writing and then starting to produce the plays that I was writing that I started to have a desire or an affiliation with like the idea of um, producing my own stories. And once that became at the forefront of what I wanted to do creatively, then film made a lot of sense. Uh, Cause it's very hard in uh, Canada to, to produce new work. It gets premiered, but it doesn't really have a lot of longevity. There are several theater companies that produce new works, but there are so few of them ultimately that it's harder for a play to get produced across the country and have multiple performances. And um, for that to, to lead to any real steady income is a much harder pursuit. And, many, and I know people who do it and kudos to them because they're committed, but it is really hard. And so I sort of discovered that I could make my own stories and make them in film and make them in series. Uh, and uh, and that it was much more like, a, I would struggle to get 300, 500 people to come and see a play, but I could make a film that thousands of people would see. And so it, that was kind of the avenue into that. And then of course, I started making money doing commercials and thinking like, okay, this is much more practical. <laughs> and then, but then I got seduced by it. Like now I really love the medium in a different way. I haven't done a stage play in a really long time and I uh, I do miss it, but there's, there's a whole different style of acting that I um, love above and beyond like producing and writing. So, um, yeah, I, th I think it was kind of a necessary transition and then it became a new love of the form. That's yeah, so this is a, a, yeah, that's the story world over. I mean, I have been interacting with uh, a lot of actors around the world and uh, we get to hear the same thing, uh, uh, which is uh, quite uh, worrying in the sense. Uh, yeah. So what do you think uh, is a solution? What should be done or can be done to address this problem and to improve the situation for the theater? And uh, I don't know, that's a good question because it's very hard to, it's hard to address. I mean, certainly in our country, so much of our theater is dependent on funding through government funding. So we don't have a lot of commercial theaters. Um, the, the larger theaters that are able to be self-sustaining and generate their own profit or the profit oriented theaters because most of us are non-for-profit charitable um, organizations. Um, so there's a there's a mentality I think too that is different 
when film and television has to be profit oriented, it has to generate revenues. It is a business different from theater where I am. It's not, a, it's not really seen as a business. It's seen as a, an art form that is uh, important and it's a, a part of our culture, but it doesn't have the same value associated with it because it doesn't have a monetary value. It's not revenue generating. And that I think is like part of the mental switch. Who knows what's going to happen now? Like all the theaters are shut down and in crisis because of the pandemic. Um, and maybe that will start to shift the the way in which the organizations and the funding bodies are approaching that work. I think it's also so expensive to make that it becomes a kind of elitist art form. And so I used to do, and I still do to a degree, but I did for a long time, a lot of outreach and arts education and bringing drama and theater into schools and trying to maintain and develop and sustain a relationship between young children and teens and theater so that they had that exposure and could appreciate. Cause now, especially with phones, like, they're consuming YouTube, TikTok, everything's coming at them so quickly that the thought of sitting in a theater and, and having the attention span to listen to a live performance is a bit foreign for mm -hmm. a 12-year-old. Uh, yes. And everything's so immediate for them. So it, it is like, I'm not sure how it's going to evolve it, it is very scary because there's nothing like theater like when you're in a good theatrical experience that's happening live in front of you there's a relationship between you and the performers or you know as a performer in the relationship with the audience that is very unique and special and it, and as much as i love television and film and i consume it like crazy that there's nothing that is the same as a live experience. Absolutely. I mean, uh, I'm 100% uh, agree with you on this. And uh, we really miss theater because even in this part of the world, in our country, India, uh, theater is dwindling. It has gone down. Yeah. And it is uh, quite a depressing situation in the sense and people are losing hope. And uh, they're trying to bring the cinematic elements uh, into their productions. Uh, yeah. all the visual wizardry the and components and yeah like absolutely but and and uh, uh, just come to think of it i mean it's like uh, basically you are trying to revive a certain uh, part of the art uh, by which is dying because mm -hmm. there's not enough commercials or you know the viability or the money in, yeah. whereas you're trying to mount it up uh, with a production which requires uh, even more money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it, that's it. It's, it's quite yeah. ironically. It's, it's quite ironically. It's, 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 yeah. <laughs> and and uh, if you're not able to recover that money, uh, then obviously it's the death of the theater then. Yeah. It's, exactly. How it's, it's, not it'll true. die before time. Yeah. Um, so, I have a question. Uh, which is yes, somewhat on the lines of uh, what we are discussing here. And uh, it's uh, related not to theater, but to the medium of films. Now, like she mentioned that the audience are now on TikTok and on YouTube and their attention span has gone down. And therefore, even the films have become shorter in length. Yeah, so absolutely. As, in, yeah. as an actor, I want to ask you, uh, do you find it limiting to perform in shorter span of time? like? Because it's a short film, does it limit you as an actor, or do you yeah, find no different? Good question. I don't know because I am such a like content creator, and uh, I like this series. Um, Band ladies is this web series that I made this year, and it uh, launched in May, and it's this group of women who turn their book club into a punk band. <laughs> Very different from Penny. And, <laughs> Uh, but it was, you know, five women and 
told over six episodes and trying to sort of unpack like where these women in their thirties and forties are emotionally and uh, their struggles with their uh, life and choices they've made and the rage that they were all kind of sitting on top of and that translating into like, let's do something totally ridiculous and kind of inspired by a youthful approach and and create this band. And it uh, it was a really bizarre experience to try and tell this really complex story in a very, like in these 10 minute pieces. And the level of efficiency from a writing perspective was a huge challenge to try and express all of that. But then as performers, we you, we shot so fast, it was um, 13 days. And so like the number of scenes that we were doing in a day and the location moves and the sort of the, the mechanics of getting the whole thing completed um, when normally you'd have at least 20 days for the amount of content that we were covering, that that is a huge skill. Um, and it's interesting because being in Canada, we're so much of a service industry. We we have so many American um, shows that come up here. So so many of the actors are day players. We we we're so used to arriving on somebody else's set with a lot of people who've been working on it for months and we show up and do our job and then we leave and do that kind of on a regular basis. And so many of the actors that we were working with on this particular series had had that experience. They were so used to like, I can't screw up. I got to show up. I got to be a hundred percent and then get out of Dodge. Um, so I think there is, there isn't the luxury of these like multi-million dollar films where you can spend six or eight hours on uh, one scene. <laughs> like I've <laughs> actually experienced that. And <laughs> when I watch movies like Moneyball and think like, oh, mm. Brad Pitt is so lucky to just luxuriate in this and the kind of <laughs> these actors are able to, and they're like, relax, like the performances can be so enhanced because they have so much time to work together. And and that's one of those things like having come from the theater, you spend weeks rehearsing and then you spend months performing, like where you can end up as an actor inside of a story is so completely different than what you can achieve in in these shorter films and, and web series and, and so on, because there's just, there is no time for that. But, but it, but it's, that's just a different skill. You just develop a different skill and, and you get really efficient at like dropping into whatever that immediate state of being is or that emotion and finding ways to like connect to the other actor and just be so present because you only get three takes or whatever it is. Yes, I mean, like you said, I'm to connect with the actor uh, and within those three takes, I think you did very good with Penny. Uh, you know, who was acting for the first time, Troy. And um, it's it's interesting to know all your thoughts, uh, you know, uh, coming out from an actor. Uh, so that's a, it, it rounds off an actor, you know, who's writing and directing and thinking and concerned about the society and the world and the issues yeah. uh, which are being uh, promoted and projected. Uh, that's what I guess uh, amounts to a little bit of a social responsibility us on us as artists. So yeah, um, it, for sure, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And and like uh, Sahitya was asking about the importance of the short films, uh, which is where I guess, uh, like you mentioned, that you miss that being on stage and theater. Uh, uh, short films are stepping in there because they are providing you with those kind of stories and roles and characters, uh, which are uh, generally missed out in a feature film. Yeah, uh, because there's so less. Uh, yeah. in number. Yeah, so it's I hope an opportunity maybe to be more creative in that 
respect in terms of the kind of content that can be made in short films. There's it, the, the risk, the financial risk is not as high as a film. So there's a little bit more freedom. Absolutely. Right. And I really look forward to seeing you more in short films uh, like Penny and uh, wish you all the best and success. And thank you for giving your time to Lift India and speaking to us. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. It's lovely to talk with you and meet you and good luck with the festival. Thank you. And and I'm quite surprised that we saw spoken about 40 minutes. Uh, 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 it, it just, the time just flew by. <laughs> Yeah, it was a very interesting interaction. Yes. yes. Uh, all right. Thank you, Kate, uh, once yeah. again, and uh, look forward to seeing more of your work. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.